a nickel long for turning them bass. Never worry about the price of gas. I've been wheeling and dealing and sitting there in. Welcome to another edition of Realistic Hunt Adventure. Today we're going to show you how to skin a deer. Um, I just got my apron on so I don't get dirty. I'm doing a whole bunch of them today. Uh, this is a guy's nice buck. Uh, super early. This is uh, September 25th. And when you shoot them this early, they have these really nice pretty guard hairs on them. Uh, they make a really, really pretty mount. A lot of guys down south, they get to get the pretty deers all year long, but up here, usually by uh, mid-October, they're already long-haired and they don't look very nice. But this guy shot bigger bucks, but none this pretty, so he wanted to mount it. So I figured I'd show you how to cape a mount out, and we're going to show you how to cape out a doe just for butchering. Uh, as you can see, there's a rope around his antlers. A lot of guys want to tie a rope up around this neck. And what you're going to do is you're going to girdle it, you cut the hair follicles, you break them, and it won't lay straight again. When the tax service goes to mount it, you're always going to see this line around the deer's neck. So take a rope, tie them up around the antlers, hang them by its antlers. The only time you ever have to worry about hanging them by the antlers are uh, late December and then January, you know, when the deer start to shed. I've seen deer shed as early as mid-December, but this, they're usually wounded or something, their bodies hurting so they get rid of the antlers uh, but most of the time just hang by the antlers and you can hang them by the feet we're gonna hang this one by the feet when we go to skin it but don't hang it by the feet for days and show your buddies and stuff what it's gonna do is all the blood and all the water is gonna run down into the neck run down into the head and I've seen it actually swell the deer's eyes completely shut fill the head so full of water um, so you don't want to do that. It's not good for it. Plus, now this is a lot of your meat here in your front half and your back half, of course. If you're hanging it up by its feet, it's all running down to here. Where's it going? It can't get out. It's not getting out through the throat hardly at all. Just little bits. It's going to get clogged up right away. So when you hang it up by the head, everything drains out of it. You can take your water hose, rinse it on out, cleans them out good. Uh, so remember, don't hang it by the feet unless you're skinning them and you're ready to, to you know, process it. Um, other than that, you know, just by the antlers, same as dragging them out of the field. Remember, don't girdle them. Uh, if you do shoot one early, make sure you rinse the blood off of them the best you can. Where you shot it, I like to stick a hose down the mouth so it washes all the stuff out of the throat because they get blood all up in there and stomach acids and it can ruin your meat and it can ruin your hide. And then, see this guy here, see where he stopped? That's perfect. See, he split the rib cage a little, but you don't go all the way up in here into the brisket. See it here, Zach? You don't go all the way up into here. You stop back here parallel with the leg. You reach up in there with your arms. There's no reason to cut it up and cut the throat out. You don't have to. That's old wives' tale. You hang it up by the antlers, you wash the throat out with your water hose, and there's nothing in there. It's perfectly fine. And if you wanted to mount it, if you cut it up into here, it's ruined. If you go up into the brisket, you can fix it because this hair is longer. You can sew it, you won't see it. But once you go out of the brisket, you're never going to hide it. I don't care how good of a sewer you are, you're never going to hide it. So stop back between the legs. So we're going to show you how to start this, um, hang it up, and how I do it. You know, everybody, there's 10 different ways to skin a cat, but there's only a couple of the ways that are correct. Uh, this way is one of the correct ways to do it. So. Let's get into it. I use just a regular, uh, this is my butcher knife, but it's no more than like a heavy duty flame knife. Uh, you can use your hunting knife or whatever, use a sharpener, whatever ones you got. Just make sure it's good and sharp. 
a lot of guys will sell you gimmicks and stuff. I even had a guy uh, years ago, back when he wanted me on his show, he sent me some knives and said, hey, skin the deer with them. I skinned the deer with it, and they were really sharp, great knives. Great on being, they were sharp, not on great on being handled, uh, easy to handle. They were some weird shape, and they were like, oh, it's easy, it's not. Regular knives, they work great. Nothing fancy. So, just stick your knife in a little bit under the skin and go down right down the middle. Now, the key is to keep your deer clean. Not clean for dirt, but clean for hair. Most importantly, clean for meat. So you want all the meat, all the membrane, everything you can off of your hide and stays on the carcass of the deer. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Reason being is when you keep it clean, it starts clean and it stays clean. You don't have to uh, have those big chunks of meat all on your deers. I get guys bring deers in all the time. It's got steaks on the inside. That was just a joint. I like putting my knee behind it so when you hit the joint, you leverage it. Pops it right open. These are our tags that we issue. It's a uh, deer, Indiana, and this year it's going to be yellow. A little bit more awkward because I'm trying to let you guys see exactly what I'm doing. Normally I'd be on the other side of the deer doing this. But I'm going to do one leg while you watch, and then the other leg I'll do normal where it's easy for me. To skin out a head mount, probably talking total 15 minutes. I can do it quicker, but you know, showing you guys probably like 15 minutes. So this is what I'm talking about. You see this? Can you see it there? This is the membrane. You don't cut back here. This, what this does, you don't think this is a lot, but once you get down into here, it's gonna be peeling off chunks of meat. So you keep it clean here. And what you do, you use a lot of pulling. Once you have it clean, you can just pull it. Now this is what I'm talking about. Let's see if I can show you. This is a flank steak. See it right here? But cut on the back side of it, right there. And all you have to do is get about an inch showing. Once you have an inch showing, when I hang it up here, you can pull on it and it'll come right down. Nice and clean. So one inch, nice and clean. And when I say one inch, I literally mean that's all you got to do is one inch. The more you do, the more chances are that you'll cut into the meat, you know, instead of behind the meat, you'll cut the meat, and then it's on the hide and then it'll start messing it up. So that's one side. I'm going to roll it over and I'll do the other side. You still filming? Yes. Sure you get this top joint not the bottom joint you see there that would have been going down through the bottom joint what it's going to do is you're going to cut through here and now this tendon where you're going to hang your deer won't be there because it's open so always remember stay closer to the hooves than up on the body and when you'll find that joint you won't mess it up i can tell you that on the other one Oh, 
you can use a rope. When I'm out west, I always use a rope and just hook it up to my Jeep, pull it up on a tree. Here we have a wet. Before we start pulling on the back side, we're going to start the front side. Now for a head mount, you don't want to mess the legs up, so when you start on the legs here, you stick the knife in, you see the brown, you see the white, you want to go right down the middle, not down over here, just up on top. Now when you get into here, don't cut it down over here, you don't have to cut it back to here, just when you're here, just cut it on over. What I like to do is just stick the knife in and pop it up. Do the same to this side. I like leaving the feet on to get inside. You start to brisk it while you have it up in the air. And again here, you don't have to do a whole lot, just a little bit, a couple inches of getting it nice and clean. hanging for I think two days in the cooler. Um, we wanted to get a chance to film it for you guys. I had to wait until I had someone to come film. So, a lot like that. So now that's started. Now I like to finish this on down like I said. See here. About one inch. You got one inch you clean you're good this side you might have to do a little bit more because you kind of gutted it a little crooked there's that flank stake again go about an inch behind it about an inch on down now there Front legs, head and shoulder mounts, you don't need the front legs. If you want to do a half a mount, what you do, you would skin these on up. You would split this a little further, like that. And this is what you do, I'll show you. Take it all the way around and go this even further. Just keep it in the middle. Whoever's mounting it's going to have to split it out anyways. But what you're after is this is a joint. Now you can tube it out like a sock. That works too, but this is probably the easier way to do it. Tubing it is really hard, especially if you're rigor or semi frozen. Alright? So there, see I got a hole all the way underneath. Now you just come up here, find your joint, pop it. Don't cut your fur, now that's attached. So that will be, you do it for the other side, you can make a half a mount out of it. This is just a head and shoulder, you don't need it. So back to this side, how you normally would do it, you would just, you have it started, Knife in, pop it, and see I like putting it on me, it gives you leverage. Pop it off. Okay, so now everything is started, now it can go quicker. Uh, this guy left the plug hole in, which you're not supposed to do. Uh, when you gut them, you can either take an axe or saw, split the uh, hips in half and pull it out that way or you can take a long knife, stick it in here, cut a circle out, pull it out. If you're going to skin it right away, you can do it, you know, when you're doing it now like I'm doing it. So, just grab it and pull. See? Nice and clean. Clean. Clean is the key. Now, come to the tail, right? There's a joint in the tail. Take your knife. Wiggle it, there's a joint, it pops. 
again, make sure that's kind of stays pretty clean. So when you pull, it stays clean. Do that. Use your body weight. You, I like taking my fist and putting in it and pulling. It gives you kind of a little bit of leverage. This is peeling down because of, it's clean. If I had this red meat up here on here, you can't pull it down. You're not strong enough. I normally do this with a winch, which I have it hooked on, but most guys don't have that. And for a head mount, once you get down to the shoulders, you're gonna have to do that by hand anyways. So this one, I'm just gonna do all by hand, just to show you guys. Okay, put my fist in there. Get too low.
right about now is where most guys stop. And they say, that's good enough, and they cut it off. Well, it's not. You only need one vertebrae, well, three inches of neck at the most. All you need to get a measurement for your taxidermist. I can take them down to no vertebrae, but uh, that's only if you had a measurement first. So it starts to pile up on you, and you start to work down in a hole. When you're doing that, you know you're there. So like so. See that? That's basically there. It's the back of the ear. That's the back of the head. And that's the other side of the other ear. So, some guys use a bone saw and they'll get in here and they'll cut it. That's fine. Don't cut your hide. So many guys have brought me deers where they're cutting it and they're in there and you start catching the other side because you're only looking at one side. Oh, it's clear, but it's not another thing you'll make a hole. I don't use a bone saw unless it's some great big old deer. And for some odd reason I can't get the vertebrae, which is usually never. I've done elk and caribou. I just stick the knife in. You feel them with the knife. Just working it around. And all I'm doing right now is cutting the meat. So now that I got the meat cut, I go and I feel with the knife, and you can feel the vertebrae, and you can go under. Right? So I went under it on that side. Bring it back around, and there. That feels like it went under on that side. So what I like to do is I like to give it a twist, like so. Do this. One little piece of meat hole, and it's off. That was not hard at all. So, you can lay it out. What you want to do is line everything back up. Leg to a leg, belly to a belly. But look here, see how clean that is, people? See, folks? Clean. There's no chunks of fat, there's no chunks of meat. Nice and clean. So, line it back up. There. Back to the way it's supposed to be. Alright? This is. The best way to bring it into your taxidermis hole. If you wanted to skin it off, skin it off, bring it in whole. You never know what mannequin you might want. Offset shoulders, pedestal mounts, those all take different mounts of hides. Uh, if you want to cut it, that's fine. Biggest thing people do, it's down here, Zach, look. See this? This is the leg. These little hairs here, this is behind the leg. That's the shoulder blade. So you, you want to cut it behind the shoulder, right? So everybody goes, cool. They come over here, they put their foot on it or whatever, grab it, put their foot on it, you know, and they'll start cutting, right? Because they're behind the leg. What they do is they do this. They cut, and they end up cutting a cricket. And it goes up into here, and now you're too short. But if you cut it from the back to the belly, like this, guess what? You're not gonna cut over into here because you know you're going crooked. So when you cut here, you know you're going down here. You know where you're heading. So, put it on there. Always give a little extra. See that? That's more than enough. And you're good to go. Now, that would take up less room in your freezer if you were taking it to your tax nurse. You don't have all that extra hide piled up on you. So. That's how you do a head mount. And with talking and everything, what did it take me exactly? 20 minutes? Yeah, like 20, 21 minutes, because I was talking and I was trying to show you guys, but that is clean, ready to go. I'm gonna take the throat out now, rinse it up, get that butt out of there, and clean it all up, get it ready for the guy. But this, that's how you do a head mount. Uh, I'll show you how to do a dough mount too. If I don't put the dough before the buck, I don't know which way I'll edit it, but 
we're going to show you how to skin the dough too. So, stay tuned. All right, folks, this is the dough. I decided I'm going to put the dough after the buck, so you already rocked how I skin the buck. This one, you're going to skin exactly the same way, except, see how you cut the ribcage up here? You're not mounting it. You can cut the throat all the way down, right? Like so. So what I'm going to do on this one, keep this video a little shorter, I'm going to go ahead and start it just like I did the buck. With the back legs, bringing it up, cutting it out the leg, like so, you know, whatever. So I'm going to turn the camera back on once I have it hanging, and I'm going to show you how much quicker a winch will make doing your deer. You always see the old hillbillies doing it with a pickup truck. You can actually do it with a pickup truck. If you do it correctly, you don't need the golf ball. That's what you use the tail for, but you can use a, a truck and it's just instead of pulling it up, you're kind of pulling it sideways. You kind of still have to be careful, but I'll show you. So, did the legs, did the front legs, like I said, just cut them, stayed in the white, started it. Got that one inch, like I said, right there. The he skinned it on the inside. All I did was one inch, okay? This is him, this is me. So there, I just started it, right? Now here's the tail. He did it correctly, got the butt out of it. There's the tail joint, right? Keep it clean. So you give it a little pull. And since it's clean, it peels off. If you had this red meat on here, it wouldn't peel this easily. Now I could take this and pull it on down, right? Well, the golf ball trick is for the idiots that cut the tail off. You want to tan this hide, make it a hide out of it, you want the tail on there. So, the tail makes a knot. They would take, tell you, stick the golf ball in there, put the chain around it. Well, yeah, but you don't need it. All you do is grab the back half of your hide, pull it together. With that tail in there, it makes a knot. So, I have a winch. I lower it. But you can literally hook it to something, a tractor, a truck, and you take a chain and just loop it around. Get in there, just loop it around. And now, pull away with your vehicle or my lens. But it's clean. If you start it clean, it stays clean. Hey folks, well I hope you enjoyed that skinning segment, it was a little informational. Uh, it's how we personally skin ours, like I said there's 10 different ways to skin a cat, uh, but that's one of the number one uh, ways to do it, most butchers do skin them that way. Uh, the only other thing I didn't show you is if you're going to put a head in the freezer for a while, anything more than a week for sure, get it in a big heavy duty garbage bag. Uh, get all the air out of the bag, tie it up tight around the antlers. If you want, even take some duct tape and tie the bag to the antler so it's totally sealed off. Gets all the air out of the bag. Uh, so it's so your eyes don't get freezer burn, your tips of your nose, your ears. I've seen guys that leave them in the freezer, you know, two, three months and they get ruined because they didn't have them in a bag. Uh, I've seen them as long as two years that were wrapped up in a bag and were still savable. Uh, they had freezer burn, but it wasn't super bad. You can rehydrate some things and fix some stuff, but uh, just get it in a bag tied up tight, or better, use it to a taxidermist right away. Uh, the only other thing is, if you have a taxidermist telling you to skin it down the back, not rolling it down like I showed you, 
it's because they're doing a factory tan. Two things with the factory tan. Uh, number one thing is they shrink. Guaranteed they shrink by like a third or more. Um, we measure our deers when they come in and I'll throw a tape measure on it in front of you and show you that measurement. If you pick that deer up and it's smaller than what I measured it at there, it's free. That's our standard model. We always offer that because you got to understand that deer is dead now. It's a muscle. It don't have no more blood in it. So it's smaller. It's just like any other muscles. No blood, it gets shrunken down, but we know how much we can stretch back. So when we put that tape on there and it says 20 inches, I can get 21 out of it easily, you know. But a factory tan, the way they work it is, they don't measure it when you come in. They salt it, send it off to the tannery. Another thing is, UPS can lose your stuff all the time. The tanneries lose them. The tanneries rip off ears, cut off lips and eyes. What you're doing is you're handing out your work and letting somebody else do the work for you. And when they mess up, now it's on you and now it's on your customer. I get taxidermists every year calling me, asking me for capes because they got them back from the tannery and it's missing an ear. Can't mount a deer with one ear. Uh, that's the other thing they have. But what they do is they send the hide off to the tannery and they get it back. Then they stretch on it, get it what they think is big enough. And now they take a tape measure to it, measure it, and that's what your mannequin will be ordered and that's how big your deer is. I stop at taxidermists' shop all over the country when we're out hunting. Um, most taxidermists love to talk with other taxidermists that aren't in their area because you can learn little tricks from them and you can learn uh, the main thing is like different companies where they're ordering from that you've never heard of but I've met them all and everyone that does a factory tan that I've ever met that's how they do it it's not the right way uh, in my opinion because it shrinks so much you know who wants a smaller animal than what you actually kill but hey whatever but back to my skinning video um, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I've never actually done the golf ball trick that I was telling you about that you see on TV all the time, uh, but it works kind of in the same principle. Just the main thing is make sure your hide is clean, make sure you get them frozen or to, uh, to your tax numbers right away, and don't split them up. Get all the blood off of them as quickly as possible. Uh, stay tuned. We got some more videos coming up. We got some cooking videos, and I'm actually working on the brown bear hunt right now so that'll be probably posted in another week or so here but i hope you enjoyed and always remember god bless and keep hunting thanks for watching everybody